Hey Harry Potter fans, Peter Kenneth here. Welcome back to the Potter Collector Channel where we are a community of collectors. Today we are talking about a very big day, a very big moment and year for Harry Potter fans. The 25th anniversary of the very first Harry Potter book. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Today we're gonna to take a look at the silver edition. Silver is the color to celebrate 25 years. So this is the silver edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. There are some fun early doodles of different characters and items and places in here. There are some stories from Thomas Taylor, the illustrator of the front and the back cover of this book. So we're gonna read through that. We're gonna do a little bit of a flip through and just celebrate and enjoy the magical book that changed many of our lives and and made such a massive impact in history. So let's take a look at the front cover of the book. We see that iconic artwork by Mr. Thomas Taylor, the very first illustrator on any Harry Potter book. Harry's there about to board the Hogwarts Express. He has just gone through the wall and landed on platform nine and three quarters. You look at this and you instantly know what the book is. This artwork is used on different translations. The deluxe collector's edition published by Bloomsbury. It's iconic. That's really all I can say about it is that this artwork is so iconic and every Harry Potter fan knows it. On the back of the book, we see Albus, Percival, Wolfric, Brian, Dumbledore. He's holding his Deluminator. And there's actually a story about this illustration in the back of this book. Something that a lot of Harry Potter fans already knew, but you may not know about it, so we're gonna read about that. On the back of the book, it says, celebrating 25 years of Harry Potter magic. Harry Potter thinks he is an ordinary boy until he is rescued by a beetle-eyed giant of a man, enrolls at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, learns to play Quidditch, and does battle in a deadly duel. The reason? Harry Potter is a wizard. I'm gonna show you something cool about the very first description of the book. I have the first printing right here, and we're gonna take a look at that and kind of compare the two a little bit. But on the back of the first printing, there are some funny typos in the description of the book. And underneath the dust jacket is a beautiful brand new hardcover book featuring that exact same artwork on both the front and the back. Here is the magical spine of the book. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, J.K. Rowling, Dumbledore at the top, Bloomsbury logo at the bottom. All right, let's open up this thing. Now, I'm not gonna read out loud every little piece of content that's in the book, but I will show you every piece so that you can read it for yourself if you'd like to. Now, the front flap of the dust jacket has some more information about the book, and I'll read a little blurb here. It says, join Harry on the adventure of a lifetime as he embarks for his first year at Hogwarts in this silver anniversary edition of J.K. Rowling's spellbinding classic. With an exclusive revival of the much-loved original cover art, this magical edition is accompanied by celebratory bonus features and includes Thomas Taylor's charming account of how he came to create one of the world's most iconic cover illustrations, making this a volume to be treasured by Harry Potter fans, young and old. It's time to raise a goblet of butterbeer to celebrate the legendary story of the boy who lived. Price $16.99. Here we have the half title page, as well as the title page. And on the title page, you'll see it says Silver Anniversary Edition. On the copyright page, it shows that it is a first printing, that number one in the number line, 135-7910-8642, tells us that it is a first printing. If there was no number one in that number line and the lowest number was a two, that would be a second printing. And if the lowest number was a three, it would be a third printing and so on. You always take the lowest number in that number line to determine what printing your book is. On the dedication page, it says, for Jessica, who loves stories, Jessica is J.K. Rowling's daughter, for Anne, who loved them too, and for Di, who heard this one first. Anne was J.K. Rowling's mother, who passed away while she was writing this first book, and Di is J.K. Rowling's sister. And we have a doodle done by J.K. Rowling in 1991 of Peeves the Poltergeist. When we flip to this page, we have an early drawing of Hagrid with Harry Potter, Dumbledore, and Professor McGonagall in Privet Drive by J.K. Rowling, delivering Harry to the Dursleys. The book that changed my life. I can't even imagine being an author and seeing your book on a bookshelf for the first time, which is exciting enough 
and then to have it just explode into the phenomenon that it is. Like, I have no idea what that's like and can't even comprehend what that would be like. On these pages, we have a drawing of the opening to Diagon Alley done in 1990. It shows the transition of the brick wall opening up with a little blurb that says, the brick he had touched quivered. It wriggled. In the middle, a small hole appeared. It grew wider and wider. A second later, they were facing an archway large enough even for Hagrid, an archway onto a cobbled street, which twisted and turned out of sight. So descriptive, like, so descriptive. And then here we are, chapter one, The Boy Who Lived, with some new stars decorating the page, which match the stars on the front cover oh, and the back cover. And all of the chapters are gonna have that fun artwork. So we can actually flip through the book because there aren't really any illustrations included within the book itself. That's something I would have loved to see, kind of like the American editions where each chapter has different artwork. I think that would have been cool if they maybe implemented the different doodles that JK Rowling had done into the different chapters. But alas, Earwax, they did not. But what they did do is they added little ornaments within the book pages. So for example, Dumbledore's chocolate frog description, instead of just writing it out, they added this little box around it and the little chocolate frog in the corner there. So there are a few of those. Let me find the other one. And then in chapter 16, which is through the trap door, after the trio gets past the giant chess set, well actually Ron doesn't get past the giant chess set, but after Harry and Hermione get past the giant chess set, they go into the room that Snape has set up up to help protect the Philosopher's Stone. And just like the Chocolate Frog card, they have his riddle in a box that looks like a sheet of paper that has been written out that has to be solved in order to move on to the next room. So those two things had been added, but that's about it for anything within the book itself. So now we're in the back of the book where it says, celebrating 25 years of magic, 1997 to 2022. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It was in 1990, during a delayed train journey from Manchester to London, that J.K. Rowling first had the idea for Harry Potter. The black-haired, bespectacled boy who didn't know yet he was a great wizard. The unassuming hero met an enthusiastic response from the book's first readers and would go on to carve a wizard-shaped place in literary history. Ain't that the truth? So on these next few pages are blurbs from different articles, different reviews, letters that were sent to J.K. Rowling or Bloomsbury to talk about how much they love the Harry Potter books, some fun facts as well. So we're gonna go through some of them, but if you'd like to read everything, you can definitely pause the video. So some fun facts, the date of publication, the 26th of June, 1997, the first print run, 500 hardcover copies, one of which is in this box right here that we're gonna take a look at. Number of words, 77,869. And the time to write Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, five years. There's a sketch of the sorting hat by J.K. Rowling. And then over here it says, news about Harry Potter spread by word of mouth and the book quickly became a favorite with primary school children who hoped they too might receive a letter from Hogwarts one day. On the next page, we have a picture of the adult edition. Now the adult edition is just a different cover. The contents inside, the words, the text, everything is identical to Philosopher's Stone, the children's edition, but the cover is different to help entice adults to want to read it. And the little blurb here says, Bloomsbury published a paperback edition for adults on 11 September, 1998, after a member of staff saw a commuter reading the book hidden in a copy of The Economist. There are some other fun facts on here. And then on this next page, there's a illustration by Levi Pinfold. And it says, in the 25 years since publication, the story of Harry's clash with the evil wizard Lord Voldemort has become established as a classic and continues to inspire new generations of readers around the world. Honestly, there's no higher praise, I would guess, for an author to literally inspire people to learn how to read like myself. Harry Potter taught me how to read and other people who may not like read it inspires them to read. And then here we have the story as told by Thomas Taylor, the illustrator about how he got the job and some information about his illustration. A brush with magic, drawing Harry Potter. Share a glimpse behind the scenes as illustrator Thomas Taylor tells the story behind the cover illustration of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which was destined to become one of the most recognizable book covers of the 20th 
century. Thomas says, I'm often asked if I was paralyzed by the pressure of producing the cover art for the very first edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. But that's because nowadays it's hard to imagine a time when no one had heard of Harry Potter at all. I was a newly graduated art student back in 1996, 23 years old, and looking for my first break in illustration. J.K. Rowling's debut novel had only just found its publisher. By chance, I'd left some wizardry and dragonish sample art at Bloomsbury offices in my portfolio. I got the call at the children's bookshop where I worked at the time. When I traveled to London to meet Barry Cunningham, the editor who rescued the boy who lived from the slush pile, he asked me to paint Harry approaching the Hogwarts Express on platform nine and three quarters. There was some toing and froing about how to draw Harry simultaneously approaching the train in the front whilst not presenting the back of his head to the reader, and then I was given a printed manuscript to read on my own train journey home from King's Cross Station. And just so that Thomas does not get hounded by questions wondering if he has that manuscript still, and can you purchase it for your collection? I will read done so, and he no longer has the manuscript. I must have been one of the first people in the world to read Harry Potter, though all I could think about was how not to muck up my debut professional illustration commission. But I still had room to wonder as I turned those loose sheets and met Harry, Ron, and Hermione for the first time. Back then, most illustration work was still done on paper with pens and brushes. I used Dr. P. H. Martin's inks on a hot press watercolor paper for the cover art, with a charisma black crayon to finish. I probably spilled coffee on it a few times too. I'd been asked to also supply a wizard to decorate the back. And so without any more specific instruction, I painted my own magical father in wizard robes and a pointy hat. So that right there is a fact that many Harry Potter fans know at this point, but a lot of you may not know. This wizard right here that we see on the first few printings of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone is not meant to be Dumbledore or Nicholas Flamel. It's just a standard wizard that Thomas Taylor drew based off of his father. Many illustrators would probably agree that one's first efforts are best forgotten. In my case though, my debut art found itself on a book destined to be one of the most famous in publishing history. But it would be the wizard on the back cover who briefly attracted the most attention. Who is that? Readers wanted to know. It's not Dumbledore, it's not Quirrell, and it's not Snape. Was there some secret here? Was this a clue to something that would happen in later books? And what is that in the mysterious wizard's coat pocket? Actual conspiracy theories began to grow and the trickle of letters and emails to Bloomsbury became a torrent until I was eventually asked to replace my father with a painting of Albus Dumbledore. And Thomas concludes with, I've since gone on to write fantastical stories of my own, and my days illustrating book covers are behind me now, but I'm still proud of my brush with the magical world of Harry Potter. My dad was grateful for the anecdote too. And then there's some information about Thomas Taylor there. And then on the back, dust cover flap, we have information about J.K. Rowling as the author. And that is the 25th anniversary edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. So cool that they brought back the original cover artwork for this book. Now let's take a look at the very first printing, one of 500 copies. It still blows my mind that I am the caretaker of one of these rare and beautiful books. But let's just do a side-by-side -side comparison. This just gives me chills, holding these two books together. We have the book that was published on June 26th, 1997. That's when you could purchase this book in stores. And now it is in the same room as the 25th anniversary edition. 25 years of Harry Potter. How crazy is that? You'll see at the bottom there is a blurb by Wendy Cooling, a terrific read and stunning first novel that was later put on the back of the books. And then on the back, we see Thomas Taylor's father. Now, the back of the first printing, I told you there were some errors on there. It says, Harry Potter thinks he's an ordinary boy until he is rescued by an owl, taken to Hogwarts School of Wizardry and Witchcraft, learns to play Quidditch and does battle in a deadly duel. The reason Harry Potter is a wizard. Now, most of that is the same as we see on the back of the 25th anniversary edition, but Harry's rescued by an owl. No, he's rescued by a beetle-eyed giant of a man and rolls at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, not Wizardry and Witchcraft. So one of the first printing issue points, something that you look for to see if it's a true first printing, is that switch of witchcraft and wizardry where on the first printing it says wizardry and witchcraft. And then another first issue point that you find on the first printing is the misspelling of philosophers 
It's missing an O, so it says Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. That was quickly changed at the second printing. So happy, happy 25th anniversary to Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Happy 25th anniversary to us, the Harry Potter fans, who grew up with Harry Potter. Even if you just started reading Harry Potter today, happy anniversary. You're part of the Harry Potter community now, and it's just amazing that we've hit 25 years. And also amazing to think just how much of an impact Harry Potter has had in just 25 years. To celebrate the 25th anniversary, I have two copies, one of which is going to you. Check the description down below to see how you can win this 25th anniversary silver edition. This giveaway is open to anyone worldwide with shipping included. If you're under 18, please ask a parent or legal guardian before entering or providing any information. If you have any questions about Harry Potter or collecting, feel free to leave a comment down below. You can also join the Potter Collector community on Instagram at the Potter Collector or on Twitter at Potter Collector. Now it's time to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, keep collecting. Thank you so much for watching, and if you're new here, welcome! We cover all things Harry Potter on the Potter Collector channel, like books, merchandise reviews, unboxings, Wizarding World of Harry Potter videos, and more. If you would like to subscribe, you can click right here. You can also check out a previously posted video right around here. If you have any questions about Harry Potter, feel free to leave a comment down below. I am happy to help. But for now, I must go. We'll see you next time. Whoa, where'd he go?